over here at Cable Channel 3 and you can get us on the web anytime at sandylandcenter.org and I especially like to invite you over for coffee on a beautiful, beautiful spring morning like today. It is absolutely gorgeous outside, so come over and meet us anytime you wish. But our weather for today, Monday, March the 30th. Check in on the weather.com site today. The headline reads, Spring temperatures return to the Midwest and Northeast. After months of a brutal cold and temperature roller coaster, a welcome spring warm-up is on the card for the Midwest and Northeast this week. That just makes me feel good to see that the spring is here. And that is the news. The jet stream that was causing the bad weather has shifted and as the week progresses, the warm air will spread over the plains and the rest of the Midwest warm will be warmer than the average temperature uh, and that will engulf the whole Midwest from the west to the east, that's where the jet stream is streaming right now, and that will go on through Thursday. Daytime highs will be up to 30 degrees warmer uh, than average and soar into the 60s, 70s and 80s. Kansas may even break its daily record of 89 on Wednesday and possibly pushing 90. So good warming um, trend is here. But right now in the square, um, on the square, the, it is rather resplendent. The, the, the grass looks like a green carpet out there, and it is bursting with um, spring blooms. The trees are looking just beautiful, and it is right at about 70, 71 degrees. And for today, Monday, this, this, it will be sunny with a near high of 77 degrees, with winds southwest at 9 to 17 miles per hour and it could even gust up to 28 miles per hour um, during the day sometime. And tonight it will be mostly clear with low around 44 and the, the southerly wind will become westerly after midnight. Tomorrow, Tuesday, it will be sunny with a high near 81, a northwest wind at 5 to 10 miles per hour. Um, becoming southerly in the morning and tomorrow night it will be mostly clear with a low around 51 degrees and the south wind at 11 degrees. On Wednesday it will be sunny with a high near 84, breezy with a south wind 10 to 15 miles and increase into 16 to 21 miles in the afternoon and Wednesday night it will bring a uh, 20% chance of showers and thunderstorms, uh, partly cloudy with a low around 47. For Thursday through the weekend, it will be mainly sunny, uh, daytime temperatures um, to the, up, the low to the uh, low upper 60s uh, for the highs, and the, the nighttime temperatures partly cloudy with the lows 35 to 41 degrees. The warmer trend though, the warmer weather temperature will produce an early pollen season. It is already doing that. If you suffer from allergies, you're probably feeling the effect of it. Uh, the warmer temperature will produce an early pollen season and the possible thunderstorms that come with the mixing of the air can precipitate the allergy season. And the windy conditions that often precede the storms stirs up the dust, mold, pollen, and this may activate the allergies um, sooner than expected. And then the rains that follow the thunderstorms also has an effect because that tends to break up the pollens into smaller pieces and then when you breathe the small pollen and mold and everything, it tends to go deeper into your lungs 
and causing more significant problems. So if you have um, allergies, do be uh, mindful of that and take whatever precautions that you need to take to help you through this difficult season. Look for the high pollen count today and Wednesday under these present conditions. And I have some numbers for you today. And it's healthy numbers now. These numbers uh, came from an article in this month's um, ARP. And here are some winning numbers for you to play for a healthier you uh, that research has really found to be true. Lucky seven. According to a British study, eating seven servings of fruit and vegetables daily reduce your risk of early death by 42%. Sixties and eighties. This should be the optimum heartbeat per minute at rest. A gain of just 10 beats per minute over the resting heartbeat increases the risk of dying from heart disease by 10 to 18 percent. Five, um, six, seven, these are hours of sleep per night needed to control weight. People who sleep fewer than five hours per night are more likely to become obese. Another number, 20. 20 miles is the most you should commute per day because longer commutes are associated with increased blood pressure, chronic stress, and worry. And another number for our health, 1500 milligrams. That's the maximum amount of salt one should eat in a day. Eat less processed foods to lower your blood pressure. And one and two. A ratio of one to two is the healthiest waist to height ratio. A greater ratio increases the risk of high blood pressure, cholesterol, heart disease, and stroke. Three. Three days. You should stay home with the flu. Anything less increase the risk of infecting your co-workers. Two, two hours of TB is a safe limit to watch per day. Too much two time lowers the amount of high density or the good cholesterol in the blood and increases triglycerides in the blood which can harm your heart. So the numbers 2, 3, 5, 7, 60s, 80s, and 1500. Play these numbers, right? Play them every day. You won't win the jackpot, but you will get something more precious. A lifelong of a healthier you. So keep, keep track of those numbers. So today we want to do... Uh, mark your calendars, we're coming down to the end of March, and it's a busy, busy few days. But for birthdays, um, yesterday we celebrated Patrick Prescott's birthday, it was the 29th. Today we are celebrating Janet Long and Jim Fisher. So those are the birthdays for today. So if you see these people, uh, as the weather gets nicer, I'm sure they will be out and about running errands. So do give them a call. Um, send them a card and wish them a happy birthday. And tonight, uh, the friends of the library, I like what they say as their, one of their uh, mantra. I cannot think of a day in my life when the library didn't um, exert a potent attraction for me, offering a sense of the specialness of each individual's curiosity and his or her own quest to satisfy it. So says Scott Toro. But over at the library, uh, tonight at 6 to 7, from 5 to 7, sorry, from 5 to 7 p.m., they will be having a brainstorming session for the library. They're going to serve some pizza, and uh, if you're interested in what goes on at the library, and would like to see some changes and some improvements, do visit them and enjoy the pizza and call them or you, or you can even send a message by email.
And we are now in the Passion Week, the Holy Week. And so in and around our community, there's a lot of activities going on with the um, Easter happenings. At the St. John Recreational Commission, they're holding a, their second annual flashlight Easter egg hunt at 8.30 p.m. on Thursday the 2nd at the base Fall Diamond near the Brown Park. Participants will be required to bring their own flashlights. Each egg will be filled with a treat and the golden egg will have a special surprise. The first 100 will receive a glow-in-the-dark necklace. Children 7 and under must be accompanied by an adult. The hunt is for ages birth to 12. So lots of fun for the little ones. Uh, Easter egg hunt in the evening. That, that sounds special. Sorry, I'm a little bit too old for that. <laughs> and uh, on Thursday also, at the First United Methodist Church, there's a Savior meal. And everyone is invited to come and share in this meaningful meal and fellowship. And if you have not been to a Savior meal, you need to come to this one. Come and learn how perhaps it was done in the old days. They tried to do, well, make the meal as it may have happened in a typical Jewish home. So do join the people over at the First Methodist Church for the same meal on Thursday at, in the Methodist um, Church. And other activities for the um, the community Easter egg hunt will be held on the 4th. Uh, the St. John Community Easter egg hunt will be held Saturday, April the 4th at 10.30 in the morning at the football field in St. John. Um, come have your picture taken with the Easter Bunny. That's cute. There will be activities for kids and adults. Oh, I can go to that one. So come early to register for prizes. And for the Easter services uh, on Good Friday, um, April the 3rd, the St. John Hudson Methodist Ministerial Alliance is sponsoring a community Good Friday service at 7 p.m. Friday, the, April the 3rd at the St. John Methodist Church. Many of the pastors of the Alliance will be involved in this service. Everyone is invited to attend. There will be a reception time before the service starting right at 6.30 p.m. That's a great fellowship and a great Easter service. I've been to those and they're quite informative. Again, uh, another Easter activity. There will be an Easter sunrise service April the 5th. And the Easter service, it will be held at the Roberts Family Pond, formerly the Fox Family Pond, on Sunday, April the 5th, at the Eden Valley, for the Eden Valley Church of the Brethren. We'll um, host a beautiful sunrise service on the pond at the Todd and Gina Roberts farm. So come out and bring up uh, breakfast to share with at the fellowship hall following the service. And if you want more information, do call Pastor Tom Harrison at 620-388-2923 or email him at edenvalleystjohn at gmail.com. So lots of Easter activities, lots of fun for children and grown-ups. And today's focus of the news, I was so impressed by all the activities of our young people, so I just want to make a mention of some of them that um, were in the news this week. And our congratulations go out today to a fifth grader in the St. John Hudson School District. Is Elijah Delph, and uh, who this past week headlined the St. John News as he qualified to compete at the state level in the National Geographic B. After having won the school competition in January, Elijah took a written test in which only the top 100 4th uh, to 8th graders were invited to enter at the state level. 
And each year, the National Geographic Society sponsors the B Contest, which is designed to spur students' curiosity in the world around them. And one winner from each state and territory will advance to the national competition, which will be held May the 11th in Washington, D.C., and televised May the 15th on the National Geographic Channel and the NGY Channel AP. So do it. You see, um, Elijah, that is just so commendable because he had to answer lots of um, geography questions um, to congratulate him. Also want to congratulate the um, school district USD 350 honor rolls. Um, for lack of space, I'm just going to mention the 4.0s, but in the ninth, in the seventh grade, we had Aaron Grisman, and Vanessa Marino, and Trevor Tanner. In the ninth grade, we had Clayton Plummer, Taylor Clark, Connor Ando, Olivia Falk, Chase Fisher, Tori Fisher, Jerry Lyon, and Ramsey McVeigh, Quincy Smith, and Brayden Witt. In the 10th grade, we had uh, Jorge Cleros, um, Miranda Garner, Kate Roberts, and Ryan Wooden. In the 11th grade, we had Jerry Cockett, Brandy Hansen, Audrey Mercer, Nathan White, and Devin Willinger. And in the 12th grade, we have Ashlyn Fisher, Piloki um, McCall. So do, if you see all these young people, do congratulate them and their parents too for the wonderful work that, that, that they're doing. I just like that. And for our weekly menus, um, we have over at the Sunflower Center. Uh, today they're serving up a pork fritter with hash browns, corn, a roll, um, brownies, and peaches. And tomorrow they'll be serving up barbecued chicken, a German potato salad, uh, baked squash, peach, and cobbler, and applesauce. Again, uh, be reminded that if you do need these lunches, call them over there and the Maxwell Center and they will be happy to um, get that ready for you. And our thought for today. Don't be discouraged. It's often the last key in the bunch that opens the door. Don't be discouraged. And as Churchill would say, never, never give up. Have a great day and enjoy the beautiful spring weather. This is your story. This is your story. This is your story. This is my story. This is my story. This is my story. But most of all, this is the greatest story ever told. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I know you're going to enjoy the incredible journey you're about to embark on. The story is brimming over with tales of mystery, intrigue, adventure, of love, heartbreak, and triumph, of power, of struggle, and finally, of redemption. But remember, the Bible is not a hundred ancient, unrelated paintings, but a mural all knitted together to tell the story of God's great love for us and the extent to which He will go to get us back. I know you're really going to enjoy and appreciate this wonderful experience as you fully explore how we all fit into the greatest story ever told, God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. This is God's story. I'm Ray Davidson, pastor of First Southern Baptist Church here in St. John on the corner of Second and Exchange. We would like to invite you to come and join with us as we Look at God's story, the story, of God's interaction with man. We'll begin on September the 7th at 9.30 a.m. With, with a 
worship service followed by at 10.30 with Sunday school. This is a study for everyone in the family. All of the children, young people, adults will be studying the same lesson so that we can talk about it at home as we go through the week. We invite you again to come and join us on this 31-week study of God's story and man's story.